Okay, while digging through the uh, junk duplicates parts room, I found <clears throat> I had an extra Chief Smokey, one of the China Repro ones. Had a sticker on it, whoever I got it from. Said uh, slow motor, poor smoker. So I figured, why not tear this sucker apart? Give you guys a little view of the insides of this so you can. In case you ever have to take one apart to fix it, you'll know how to go about doing it. Now it is a metal tabbed robot, <clears throat> so that means you're only going to get so many shots at this before you end up breaking tabs off. And also, metal tabs you always want to bend slowly. The quicker you burn them, the more heat is built up at the molecular level, the more fragile the metal gets, the quicker it's going to break. And these side panels are put on, <clears throat> they're pushed in, and then a tool is inserted in these little holes, and the tab's been on the inside. So that means in order to get these panels off, you simply need to pry them off, like that. And when you insert them, then you will have to use a small tool, like a drill bit, or some tempered piece of metal, like an Allen screw wrench, or something like that. Well, also, when you put them on, there is a little divot you have to make sure you get them on the right way so it lines up with the crease in the body. In other words, there's a left and a right side. Is all I'm trying to say. Now you get those off. <coughs> and if you're careful like me, you don't scratch or ding or screw up anything. Okay, now you've got all these tabs along here you're going to need to pull. You also have tabs along the bottom. Depending on how well crimped in these were from the factory, these can be a little bit harder to pull. If we just want to take the front off to look inside them, we really only need to worry about these front ones. And again, you need to get something small in there so you can get it worked up. Once you get it worked up a bit, then you can get on it with your needle nose and straighten straighten it out real well so it'll be ready to go back together like so now we've got all these side ones that we need to deal with you don't particularly have to worry about scratching these up since they're covered when the thing's put back together but you do want everything nice and straight so when you go to put it back together it, it will in fact easier. You don't want to lose any of these little clips because they're hard to come by. <coughs> so this toy operates on two D-cell batteries. Um, they made a mistake when they designed the bellows. We'll call it the air pump. See, Most of these old vintage toys had really nice bellows in them, either made with cardboard paper and a return spring or as the that would be like in the 1950s and by the 1960s they started using a, a plastic bellows they actually look like a bellows and those worked really well but the main thing is what drives the bellows needs to be linear in other words it needs to move in and out sort of like breathing you'll get the most smoke that way because the smokers will actually produce smoke when the bellows are breathing back in as well and pull that smoke back down into the pipes and the bellows and then when the bellows close again they pick up more smoke from the smoker but also exhaust out the smoke that they sucked in so you get twice the smoking effect well in this toy <clears throat> they did everything wrong if they could first there's no bellows there's a, a plastic box with a hole in it and then there's a piece of metal that simply slaps that hole and it slaps it suddenly. Smokers, we don't want to move the air fast because you can't see the smoke. It dissipates and gets spread out into all the air. If you move it slowly you see a steady stream of thick smoke, very visible, very pleasing. So they, uh, by slapping it with this one they're moving the air so quick that it's hard to get a really good smoking effect. And then secondly, there is none of that rebreathing, that sucking it back in like the bellows would do, and, and then back out to get more smoke. Because this is just a slap. 
I have modified a few of these in the past to change that from being a slapping motion to being a bellows motion. And it's kind of a pain to change once it's designed one way, but it can be done. And then the smoking effect is very pronounced, very pleasant. The smoking unit itself, as designed, is actually quite good design. It's very reminiscent of the vintage ones, unlike the smoking robot reproductions that are out there. Their smoker is actually, I mean, it was going to be a clever design incorporating the piston in with the smoker. But it's a poor design in that the area where the smoke fluid, the oil, whatever you want to use, is kept in the cotton wool is very, very small. So a very small amount of fluid can be held before they stop smoking. And then if you try to refill them by holding the robot upside down and backwards a little bit and drizzling in a few drops through the mouth tube, It'll just end up dripping down through the insides of the robot and making a mess as it goes past the piston. So, not a great design on the uh, Repro smoking robots. I mean, nowhere nice, nowhere near as nice as the original 50s and 60s smoking robot bellows. Okay, we've got all those tabs off. We got that one off. We still have these two on the shoulders which we got to uh, work up a little bit here enough to where we can get the needle nose on it again if you're not real skilled at working with your hands and, and flat blade screwdrivers and you don't want to scratch your toy up then get something plastic or wood you can make your own tools out of plastic or wood or use a guitar pick or all sorts of different things in this case I'm not scratching anything because I've been doing this geez, for over 50 years. But uh, also, I wouldn't care if I did because this was a junker one from my spares room which will eventually probably get taken apart and used for some other project or modified or, or who knows what. I don't know what. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we've made any headway here. Speaking of heads, that usually does come down to be a problem in that the, the neck of the head is usually pre-bent onto here and then when it's put into the rear there's these holes where things get tucked and that'll probably be a problem. In fact, it'll probably be a problem to the point where I'm going to go ahead and move these bottom ones here. We may have to release the base from the side just so we can get the thing apart. We'll see. Just kind of depends how well crimped together everything was. And we're starting to get some motion here. That's good. I like that. Okay. And we got a slot on the front, so it wasn't a problem. See, the front of the head just slipped into the slot. So, now we should be able to see inside. Of course, the arms will lift up out of the way. So if you've ever wondered what's going on in here. The motor is sitting in this back corner, clear back in here. And going through this gear drive. All these gears feel really tight. I'm thinking that's why they were thinking the motor was running sluggish. There's something uh, tight and binding there. This little cam right here is what kicks this, this piece of metal. And that's the slapper. Like I say, they just slap air into it. It comes by the cam and the cam goes all the way by, just boom. If instead of booming, if they just bellowed it and moved it in and out like in a breathing motion smoke would be like crazy thick coming out of the top of the head be really nice but they didn't okay I do have batteries in there let's uh, let's turn it on just as is and see what we can see let's turn on this light on this camera too 
There we go. Because it might help. Oh, okay. The motor is running backwards. This cam is supposed to be turning as you look down at it clockwise to open this. And the way it's sitting right now, it's running the wrong way. So the uh, battery wires to the motor were simply soldered on backwards. And of course, we couldn't reverse them right up here. And we can get that flipped around to where it's turning the right direction. Yeah, everything feels loose now. You can hear there's a little bit of play in things. Whereas before it was bound up because it was trying to move that thing in the wrong direction. So, I'm going to plug in my soldering gun and then we'll go ahead and look up in the head while the soldering gun is warming up. It's actually a soldering pencil. And it looks like we may be interrupted here shortly. We've got people coming. Okay, I've almost got the head apart, but I'm going to go ahead and move these uh, two motor wires around. Let's see how that helps things. Just about got it. That wire could be put on better. Let's let's redo it. Mm. 
Okay. Now let's see if that motor is turning the right way. Yes. Very good. Bump and go drive. Got it. Your clicker box is right here. Ah, you can see some small wafts of smoke. See them? Yeah. So there you have it, the inside. Got your light, got your smoke unit, clear up in the top up in there, the hose going to it. It's held into the top with these screws. So, now it's just a question of putting it back together.